Hey folks, I'm Mike, and welcome to the first edition of the Frankenstein Tech Series. Today, we're going to be talking about valves. All right, guys, as we said in the intro, we're gonna be talking about valves today. And to dig a little bit deeper into that subject, I brought Gavin along with us. He's got a lot of experience working on cylinder heads and now he's in our sales department as well. So Gavin, take it away, bud. All right, guys, like Mike said, today we're gonna to be talking about valves. Uh, anything as far as the valve goes, we're talking about the tip heights, the stem, uh, the shape of the valve, angles, the dish, the type of material, as well as coatings and everything in between. All right, so it sounds like we got a lot to get to. Let's get after it. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna talk about are dimensions of the valves. Every valve that's in every cylinder head are gonna have all these dimensions that we're gonna list off. First one going to be our valve diameter. If someone's talking about having a 2020 or a 2250 intake valve or something along those lines, what they're talking about is this measurement right here. Distance from here to here, that's gonna be your valve diameter. Next thing is gonna be our stem diameter. This guy right here, that's called our valve stem. Uh, lots of different measurements there, as well as our overall length from here to here, that's how long the overall length of the valve is gonna be. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about real quick is just gonna be the tip height. From the top of the valve to the top of this lock groove right there, that's gonna be our tip height. Everything like that, those are all gonna change depending on the valve that you're using. Going into next, we're gonna be looking at the margin on the valve. And that margin of the valve is gonna be this area right here from this face up into what we call the seat angle. And the seat angle is gonna be the next thing that we're also gonna be talking about. This margin here, very important by the way, as well as a seat angle. The seat angle is actually what seals the valve to the valve seat. That is very crucial. And there's also a lot of stuff we can play with when we go into a more in-depth video here soon. The other one is gonna be a back cut, you'll notice. There's an additional back cut on this valve here. Can't see it quite because of the coating, but she is there. And then also a back angle, which is going to be the rest of this valve right here and how it kind of faces off. And going off what Mike says is <sighs> off this back angle is, after we come on the back angle, there is an, a radius right here. This, even this radius will be different on any valve you have. Uh, you can notice the difference between the intake and exhaust valve there having different radiuses. And then on the intake valve here, we have what's called an undercut. Uh, if you can see this, you have our stem and then there's a undercut right here or what we'll call a neck down. Uh, that will be on mostly intake valves. And then you can see the difference here between the two is we have a different dish. Some of these will have a flat face. Some of them will have more dish or less. Good way to save some weight. And then the last thing is the angle that splits this margin and the face is gonna be our chamfer. Uh, and that's just to kind of get rid of the sharp edge, gives the valve a little bit more strength. Awesome. And then next, we're gonna start talking to the materials. You already heard us say a few different materials here. We're gonna jump right into it right now. All right, guys, so now that we went over many, many of the dimensions of the valves, let's get into actually what these valves are made of. Of. Let's get into the materials of them. And the most common one is gonna be stainless steel. This here is our exhaust valve for our F-Series. And as you can see, it may not look like your typical stainless steel valve. This is a black nitride coated stainless steel valve. And what that does, it, it helps with durability and it can absorb a little bit more heat and it can take a little bit more of a punch compared to just a bare stainless valve. And if you're looking to upgrade beyond this right here, uh, that's where the Inconel comes in. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the Inconel valves, Gavin? Uh, Inconel is a type of stainless steel. Um, a lot of people think that it's its own property. In reality, it's it's actually just a stainless steel valve that has Inconel properties embedded into it. Inconel is great for um, diesel engines or anything that's seeing a lot of heat. Nitrous, turbo, supercharger. Um, the un downside of Inconel is its weight. It is a little bit heavier, not much, but when your exhaust side is seeing a lot more heat associated with a lot more horsepower, usually I'd say anything over about 
thousand horsepower, yeah. I'd really like to see people upgrade to an Inconel exhaust valve. Absolutely. And then when you want to go to the baddest of the bad or you're trying to cut some weight out of the valve train for a naturally aspirated type situation, you're going to be looking at a titanium valve. This is by far what everybody's been going to for the ultimate performance experience with the valve train from NASCAR, NHRA Pro Stock, Top Fuel, everything all the way down to five or six second streetcars on um, drag week. There's no real way to say that any two titanium valves are going to be the same or equal to each other because there are different types of alloys of titanium as well as what we went over before different dimensions what's going to be right for what application and that's why we wanted to go over it however the main things that are going to be different are the coating itself and that's a visible thing you can see a bare titanium valve that's something we don't always recommend this one right here is actually a crn coated titanium valve it's got a little bit of a shimmy and a gleam to it and then also there's something called DLC coating. And DLC coating is a totally other rabbit hole that we're gonna go into one day when we go a little bit more in depth than just valve coatings themselves as to when, where, and why you would want to choose these things over the basic stainless steel. Why don't you let us know, bud? As far as the intake side, the reason why we'd wanna go to titanium is weight, weight, weight. And a good example of that is this stainless steel valve here that was used on the intake side. Now you can see this guy's bent already. Not exactly sure why it bent, but one thing that we can see is its shape along that back angle or the radius. Mm -hmm. Another thing too that you can see is it's very dished. It almost looks like a soup bowl. What that is is when this valve, when it's really, really heavy and it starts coming back and hitting that valve seat, is it tries sucking itself into the cylinder head port. And this angle starts rolling off, it starts becoming a dish, and the valve actually becomes a little longer. And it's almost like a jackhammer if you have like your half inch Milwaukee impact gun, and it just starts beating it out. A lot of things can do that, whether if it's a camshaft design or the weight of the rocker. At the end of the day, it comes down to valve weight, and that's why we'll upgrade to a titanium valve. It's extremely lighter. The coating makes it a lot more durable for heat. In fact, we'll use the same coating on a on a titanium exhaust valve for cars that see mm -hmm. two, 3,000 horsepower. Even. Absolutely. Without a doubt. And then as to go into the, the wear, the wind power low eyes, you know, if you go Inconel exhaust valve, we're looking at what roughly a thousand horsepower is about the right time to, to really can strongly consider using Inconel. 1200 absolutely, absolutely needs it without a doubt. Then going to the wear, once again, Inconil's almost always only on exhaust, except for very rare airplane and diesel, diesel applications. Engine. So other than that gas burning stuff, Inconil's only gonna live on the exhaust side. As far as wear, titanium, well, you can do tie on the intakes or on the exhaust. We recommend going to a titanium intake valve around, the, once again, that same 1200 horsepower mark. Anything above there, you're really starting to play a game of cards with yourself that there's no winning solution to. After that, the why the durability in, in, these t in these different materials. Some folks would call them a little bit more exotic. They're a little bit different, but that's the thing is that they'll basically come away and you'll have something that, yes, you might've paid a little bit more money for, but you've done nothing but increase the amount of investment into your engine by using these things, enhancing the durability, and therefore giving you a little bit longer lifespan of enjoying the product, enjoying what happens when you put your foot to the floor. There's even a little bit of horsepower left Absolutely. in uh, titanium uh, valves or just lightening up the valve train in general. We get a lot of customers that using a stainless steel uh, setup, they'll spin their, their LS engine, for example, up to 7,500 RPM and the power starts to flatline or they start getting a little up and down on their dyno graph and it's a valve float or valve bounce. Um, switching up to a titanium, uh, at least on the intake side, lightening up the valve train is makes you able to spin a little bit more RPM. That valve seals a lot more securely instead of bouncing and letting some of that air out it's worth you know some guys if they're at the 1500 or, or above range switching from a, a stainless steel to a titanium can be a couple hundred horsepower yeah, sometimes. absolutely absolutely it sure can and i think that's just about gonna do it for today i think we're gonna do a quick little wrap up and get it back to you guys all right folks so well, that's gonna do it for us today Obviously, we went over a lot of stuff, but mainly, once again, just to give you a real quick rundown if you weren't taking notes, it was basically dimensions as far as head diameter, tip height, uh, stem diameter, the different materials we go over, such as titanium, stainless steel, ink canal, everything like that, the different types of coatings, just a real quick overview of that as well. The biggest part to me, though, is the when, where, and the why. 
as far as when to pick a titanium intake valve, when to go with an Econel exhaust valve over a standard stainless steel. And I really hope that these things are gonna be able to uh, better inform you for your next cylinder head purchase or your next freshen up. We are gonna be having some more in-depth videos to really tune up valves and that's about it. In the meantime, make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell so you can see all of our new videos whenever we launch them. Make sure you reach out. If you have any questions to us, you can give us a call, email, or check out all of our social media platforms right here.